in section five we are going to cover the design methodologies that are suitable for cloud application development uh, let's start by looking at the service oriented architecture soa soa so the service oriented architecture um, is where you have services that communicate with each other and normally they use a protocol called SOP the simple object access protocol right so they pass messages to each other and those messages must conform to a certain format right so uh, the SOP protocol is a protocol specification for exchanging structured information uh, in the implementation of these some of these services of course we are not calling them cloud services but they are actually cloud services although here uh, the service oriented architecture was created for web services before the cloud but uh, it's, it's we, we it can still operate within um, cloud services context you could simply substitute cloud web services with cloud services um, so it uses XML information set for its message format. Uh, the format of the message, structure of the message is shown in this diagram to the right. So uh, it relies on uh, application layer protocols, uh, especially the HTTP protocol and also the SMTP protocol for message negotiation and transmission. So in terms of the structure, looking at that diagram, you have got a description of the service and then the types of inputs and outputs under that description in other words you have a description of the inputs and outputs and the types that it you declare the types of the data input and output and after that you go on to the interface the interface will show certain some operations on the input and outputs of course, there is also some kind of binding uh, of an endpoint. Um, the endpoint itself defines the service because the endpoint is, is, is the point where you access that particular service, which is bound to the interface. Mm. So when, what you call a service, it will be represented by the endpoint itself, which is then bound to, to the interface of that service. So mm, it's, a, it's a very well designed architecture with a standard format for message passing. So it's like you have, um, it uses URL, normal URLs, and some messages with a structured format are exchanged between these, um, uh, the, these services. So, um, so we have actually a combination of uh, service oriented architecture and also SOP, Simple Object Access Protocol, which provides together, provides what is referred to as a web service. And a web service is defined, defined in Wikipedia as either a service offered by an electronic device to another electronic device, communicating with each other via the web. That, defin that part of the definition, of course, is, is, is useful for Internet of Things. In other words, we can actually implement uh, this approach, service-oriented architecture for the Internet of Things. Or it's a, a server running on a computer device, listening to for requests at a particular port over a network and serving web documents or performing some computation. Right. So... Uh, of course, it's my, I, I'm the one who had or performing some computation because that's usually what, what, what some of the services can do. So uh, that's what a web service is. Notice that uh, reuse of services by multiple apps is a key feature. Each service provides a dedicated small unit function, which means it, we, we can reuse that. Even other applications can reuse that if they need that, that, that form of that function. So developers can orchestrate existing services in an ad hoc way to create new applications without re-implementation 
of the services. In other words, these are like functions that are already live on the web and you can actually access them. You can give them input and get responses to them. So if you have a lot of these functions doing different types of things, it's possible that you can knit them together to create a completely new, new application. And that's what we call orchestration. They are borrowing from orchestra where you have various voices and sounds and the orchestrator will have to put them together to create music. Right. From all these different uh, 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 instruments or, or, or sounds. Right. Cloud-based web services. Hmm. That's, a, that's one thing that could come in now that we have the cloud. Uh, instead of having web services, we can now have cloud-based web services. So um, web services in the modern environment are now deployed to the cloud. So it's a question of simply implementing, moving it to the cloud. So um, uh, service-oriented architecture could be used for cloud application development automatically because it's easy to translate each of the functions implemented in a web service uh, to the cloud. So in a way, web services, modern web services have morphed into cloud services. Mm. So design methods that we normally use for web services are good candidates for cloud services as well. Uh, so it's a natural fit. So this diagram uh, illustrates the fact that uh, uh, what we call the cloud cloud services are in fact web services uh, notice that uh, cloud computing also it's, it's actually included in web services it's itself a web service and so are using cloud computing is also can is also possible uh, but of course there's so are also using web services which is in which is not doesn't use cloud computing and then service oriented architecture out there. So it's possible. Hmm. It is important to note that some aspects of it are not evaluated such as security and availability. It's not very easy to evaluate security and availability of web services uh, when you are using them. Uh, in other words, uh, users are at the mercy of the provider. So that's a key advantage, disadvantage of both web services and also cloud computing. Right. Notice that in this diagram, um, Amazon still uses AWS for Amazon web services. Uh, and yet we are actually saying it's AWS cloud, Amazon web services cloud. Uh, the reason is, of course, illustrated in that diagram where uh, web services are, you can have web services that are, are in the cloud and therefore, you know, so Amazon was initially offered web services, but then started building the cloud and slowly migrated all their web services into the cloud and then, but they kept the name uh, Amazon Web Services and now it's, it's a web service cloud, right? It makes sense. To, 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 to say that. Right. Now let's look closely at this at the service oriented architecture. It is a layered architecture. And um, there are quite a number of layers that you that we would like to draw your attention to. Uh, let's start by um, looking at um, more or less at the bottom most. We are moving from the bottom upwards, starting with business systems. Uh, these are normally custom build apps and legacy systems as well, like enterprise resource management, customer research management, and so on, so on. So in other words, you have um, these business systems, right? Now, these business systems can actually communicate, you can then build on top of them what are called cloud components, service components. 
which allow layers above it to interact with business systems and realize the, the functionality of services being exposed. In other words, in the business systems, we have functions, unit functions that can then be offered as services in the service components layer. Then uh, we have composite services. These are higher level business projects created by, by combining or orchestrating service components. So if, if you orchestrate a number of service components, you can create a, comp a new service. So you have com composite services. Then orchestrated business services. These are business services, um, higher level business services created by orchestrating or, of course, combining together composite services. In other words, composite services can come together into massive services. For instance, buying buying something by credit card, that is that is a composite service. You could have sub services included in it. And even different companies involved. Then you have um, presentation services. Uh, this is the topmost layer, which includes uh, user interfaces, exposing services and business processes to users. And lastly, you have what is referred to as the, as the enterprise bus. This integrates services via adapters, routing, transformation, and messaging mechanisms. Right. So it, it, it is used by almost all those. Hmm. Right. Now here is an example of an e-commerce system it, which illustrates before you introduce service-oriented architecture uh, and after you introduce service-oriented architecture. Before you, what you have is a combined it's a closed monolithic and it's also brittle. If you break one component, the probably the entire system works. Normally, traditionally, uh, business systems with outside service oriented architecture are fairly monolithic in the sense that you have entire massive systems like service scheduling, order processing, account management. But inside it, there are lots of other functions components inside them and therefore there is no way to reuse some of them yeah it's monolithic it's, it's just one massive thing in other words these are equivalent to departments it's an entire function now when you introduce some um, uh, service oriented architecture you need to break these massive systems down into smaller chunks which become more or less services reusable business services which are small enough to be functions and you make them available via the web, possibly using a URL with parameter pass, you pass and then you, or with message passing between them. And of course you can then compo do composite services and the actual composite application like order processing is at a very high level as a composite application above uh, compose services. Right, at the top, of course, you can then have, uh, they become applications that can be used by users. Of course, notice that the data, practically speaking, remains more or less the same in terms of the components of the database. It is the business, the way the business services, the business logic is organized. Uh, in a way, in a service order, it unbundles all the functions into units that can be, you know, accessed. And then, they could be combined later on. It's easy to maintain these units and um, and then they are reusable, which is much easier. That's the end of our section on um, uh, service or the service oriented architecture. In the next section, we will look at other architectures as well.